What's up guys welcome back. This is anime crossover, you'll be watching what if Naruto was a Kryptonian in Marvel Part 3. Now let's begin. Naruto grabs Doom and tears off his armor before he can blink. He then ties him, threatening to murder him if he refuses to accept his deal. I am going to make you a deal, Victor, Naruto stated. When he rose up, he realized that his armor was in bits. Doom looked at Naruto as he watched his hands glowing with magical energy, but they seemed to fade gradually as his breathing became more difficult. Holy shit, this guy is a fucking brilliant and really obstinate, Naruto thought as he understood what he was doing. Naruto noticed Victor wasn't pulling energy from any realm, at least not yet. He's basically converting his stamina into magical energy. This helps explain his eight packs, since he is basically working out with magic. Naruto was chuckling at the hardship of other worlds that had to work out to strengthen their magic, while just making his hands light up with energy would have killed three human athletes. The fact that he is still standing tells something about his stamina. He could do that as well, but it is not as potent as drawing on someone's life force energy, and it is not the most powerful magical energy available. He increased his speed as he discovered anything else. Green energy, crap. Naruto reasoned that the stronghold could have some knowledge concerning the Green Lantern Corps, he should have been more cautious with his desire when he said that he wanted the castle to operate in all realities. It appeared logical, but several parts of it violated the norms of the realm in which he lives. While Kryptonians did not know how to construct the lanterns themselves, they were aware of the hard light projections inspired by them. Naruto felt energy emanating from the Black Ring. He understands that it is linked to the evil energy. He hopes it does not signify what he believes it does. Naruto went to Victor and gave him his decision. In a firm tone Naruto shouted he is a realm lord, and he will grant him the ability to use magic from his realm as a form of apology and an alliance to rule from the shadows, in all honesty. As much as it kills Naruto to say it, Victor has the proper notion about rule. While some of his people continue to live in stone homes, they get the greatest healthcare and food available. Victor's concern with him is that he allows his ego to get in the way too often. Naruto hopes to see a world dominated by Victor from the shadows if he can better everyone's life. He utilized his telepathy to fully experience his people's emotions and memories. It makes him both sad and pleased to see them. Hey, they're more than happy. They're satisfied with whatever they have. He rapidly examines them under supervision to determine whether anything has changed. It is not. Naruto notices several children playing in their garden, as well as consoles that Doom has changed to be more efficient there is no way to spy on them or control them. He searched through Victor's recollections and discovered that his tribe did not have to pay any taxes at all. Heck, he even employs a female to assist with certain personal matters for women. Naruto witnessed him deploy his latest and greatest bots to assist the elderly with anything they want. He sifted over his memories again to determine if he is evil, and although he has made some ethically problematic decisions in his life, there is no doubt that his people see him as a savior. He has single-handedly transformed a third world nation, Latvia, into a near paradise, with the lowest unemployment, highest education levels, lowest crime rates, and lowest suicide rates in the world. He created a type of coliseum where those who disagreed with each other may battle it out. Nevertheless, there was no killing. Naruto predicted that humans will remain human. Making an alliance with him and attempting to transform him into a type of shadow ruler is the greatest option, Naruto reasoned. What's the catch? Victor questioned, and if he'll have to serve him forever, he said again, this time with clear skepticism, curiosity, and a hint of caution while asking Naruto. Naruto responded that there is no catch, save that he must aid the world in the same manner he helped his people. Why are you asking this of me? Victor asked with a more interested tone. He truly is really unskilled. Naruto thought to himself, I can use this to my advantage, making him help everyone discreetly while neutralizing him forever and even if he does turn against me, I can just use the magic I give him to kill him. Thinking about the benefits, Naruto imagined the Avengers with Dr. Doom by their side. Naruto realizes that if he uses magic to increase his strength even once, he would be able to kill him. Naruto, on the other hand, was not going to offer him access to the speed force or the crimson energy, instead, he would provide him universal access to magic. No one could manage him. If he had platinum kryptonite, he would be unable to summon it. Naruto spoke saying that he has seen how Victor has helped his people, and the way he has improved their lives, so he is offering him a chance to help everyone from the shadows, as there are too many examples of people who have done so in the light and failed, 
Naruto was in fact trying to persuade him to take advantage of his self-importance. He went on to say that he has seen many futures with others on the front lines of these changes, and the results are chaotic and usually end in failure if you are not there to help them along and keep them together, he said, feeling his emotions and recent memories and getting him. Doom pondered why he had to govern from the shadows, despite his ego's need to have everyone know his name. Naruto said, attempting to control his enormous ego, saying humans are a greedy species by nature, it won't assist them to be better in the limelight, and his goals for global dominance will fail. Doom thought about what he said as he recognized that if he ruled from the shadows, he would be successful. Will everyone know who I am? He questioned, attempting to conceal his interest. Naruto said that it would take time and a great deal of patience. Doom remarked, it's a deal, as Naruto lifted his hand to shake his. Naruto sensed several entities attempting to enter his mind. As he shakes his hand, Naruto can sense him drawing on the zone. He could feel his thoughts becoming less confused and more free as if there was some weight on him that was beginning to vanish. He carefully grasped his head. Doom thanked Naruto as his tutors warned him of certain realm rulers who would try to influence his mind, progressively corrupting him. He yelled fiercely at those who attempted to control him. When Naruto allowed him access to his zone, he must have cleansed his mind. I must go, Naruto murmured, fiercely muttering to him but not at him. He paused for a bit before softly opening an ethereal doorway with a faint grin. Naruto knew what had happened to him. Fuck my life, he thought, realizing he had irritated some really strong entities and assuming that they were keeping him from connecting to other realms until he tried theirs. Even now, he could sense them attempting to murder him by shattering his mind, but they were unsuccessful. Naruto remembered his confrontation with Lord Chaos, and everyone halted. Even if they didn't know what the meeting was about, they could tell who it was by the vibe of it. Having gained an ally today, Naruto assumed that this was gratifying, he reasoned, grateful for Doom's lack of magical expertise. N, a Doom will not aid Naruto much till Thanos comes, because killing him would have been too cheap and would not have been a struggle, and keep in mind that Naruto is not exactly a goody two shoes when it comes to murdering people. Doom won't gain speed force, crimson energy, or platinum kryptonite ever. Naruto's perspective I was pleased that I managed to gain his support, although I could sense a considerable amount of confusion emanating from him. I observed the distressed jackal, and despite its inability to vocalize, it possessed limited telepathic abilities that could potentially facilitate communication. I was not present for that. I sent out a message to confirm if he received it, and he acknowledged it with a nod. I opened a portal back to the fortress and instructed it to accompany me. I instructed the fortress to allow it to remain. I sensed Doom starting to manipulate the magic I had granted him. I would strongly confront him if he attempted to betray me. I lost interest. Nevertheless, I could sense his presence with just a small amount of concentration. I venture out of my stronghold to acquire the ring that has captured my utmost fascination. The orange mandarin ring has the remarkable ability to manipulate matter. I am unsure of the extent of my abilities, but I aspire to create advanced materials such as true adamantium. Utilizing pim particles alone is insufficient and time-consuming. By harnessing the potential of powerful rings, I aim to produce an abundance of adamantine for a suit that can potentially rival or even surpass the Hellbat. The Hellbat suit allowed Batman to briefly confront Darkseid on Apocalypse. The Mandarin armor is a great source of inspiration, as it enables a person to stand up against the Hulk with its ten rings. One observation I've made is that when I activate the armor, it seems to generate a unique energy that I suspect is utilized to incorporate the wearer's previous modifications. I didn't notice it before because I didn't have enough rings, it seems. I efficiently collect the remaining ones, except for the tenth one. It appears that Jean Khan's mother has not yet acquired the purple ring. I observe that the tenth one is currently in possession of the Makluin who originally bestowed the rings upon the first Mandarin. I could feel his vitality fading. Not much progress was made with the others as I still recall how the trials were conducted. Fin Fang Foom was quite bothersome, though. I had no intention of testing the rings, even though I could sense a tremendous surge of power coursing through the Mandarin armor. I stepped into the temple to meet the Makluin. I was quite thrilled as this would be my initial encounter with an extraterrestrial being in person. The scrolls are no longer a concern as they have established a presence on Earth. However, any attempt by them to carry out their secret invasion would be met with a decisive response, similar to the actions taken in the Supergirl show to neutralize their threat. Upon entering the room, the ring chamber and the Makluin were already in place, 
He appeared similar to his on-screen persona, albeit with a noticeable increase in grain hair. I observed signs of his body undergoing decay and subsequent regeneration, with a ring emitting a peculiar energy to sustain his existence. However, it became evident that the energy's efficacy diminished with each cycle. You stole the rings, they don't belong to you, he shouted, though his voice was strained from exhaustion. I swiftly approached him and fashioned a seat out of stone, allowing him to rest as I sensed his anguish and imminent demise. You need to sit down, you're not feeling well, I calmly advised him while making the helmet disappear. You have not yet acquired the dragon seed. How are you aware of the rings? He inquired, his voice strained from coughing. I am certain it is a shade of purplish blood. Furthermore, let's get straight to the point, shall we? I am aware of the events that have transpired involving those who possess the dragon seed. Their actions throughout history have been far from virtuous, causing immense pain and suffering in their relentless pursuit of power, I informed him truthfully. It is a fact that several individuals with the dragon seed have been recorded in history as catalysts for significant events, including wars. He glanced at me briefly before shifting his attention to a black stone in his hand, which emitted a soft blue glow. I thought, a lie detector, how interesting, you speak true, he said with a hint of sadness, tears welling up in his eyes. My friend sought to bring together his realm in order to improve it, witnessing the intense rivalry between his own children and the extreme measures they were willing to take to gain control, he coughed up a bit more blood as I moved to heal him, hoping to somehow hear him finish his tale. Before I met him, I was on my home planet, which I'm sure you're not surprised to hear. Anyway, I managed to acquire the rings from the Makluan overlord and fled to a distant planet, gathering as much knowledge as possible before my departure, he explained, sounding a bit out of sorts as he spoke. I thought he might have dementia. Well, his physical condition is deteriorating at the moment. Upon my arrival, I had the opportunity to interact with the locals of this world, and unfortunately, many of them harbored hostile intentions towards me due to my differences. However, amidst this challenging environment, I encountered a young man who displayed an unusual lack of fear. Intrigued, I approached him, and despite his initial apprehension, we formed a fast bond, he recounted, his voice strained as he coughed up more blood. After a while, he would venture out to assist villages in need of assistance, one day, I decided to put him to the test by giving him a single ring, to determine if he was truly deserving of its immense power. He continued to assist everyone gradually, despite being in pain, using his expertise and knowledge of my ship. Soon I considered him deserving of all the rings, and he consistently demonstrated his worthiness. One day, he encountered a woman whom he fell in love with and had children with. Although he had some mistresses, he loved them all equally. However, his children turned out to be quite different from him, except for one, in total, he had eleven children, he shared as I listened intently. The child displayed remarkable maturity and bravery, fearlessly confronting his siblings when they abused their power over others. His father saw in him the potential to become the new Mandarin and decided to put him to the same test he had once faced, he reminisced. He passed the test and his father gave him a single ring to start out, however, his siblings discovered this and swiftly devised a plan to eliminate him. They enlisted the assistance of an individual named Celine Gallio, he recounted as I grew pale. I witnessed her encounter with the Ancient One. I recall her as a highly skilled witch, possessing immense magical knowledge and a formidable rival to the Ancient One. Her position as the Sorceress Supreme is largely attributed to her access to the sanctums and extensive experience in dealing with other adversaries. Naruto contemplated the need to devise a strategy to handle her. He fought bravely and with unwavering resolve, however, his lack of expertise in magic proved to be his downfall as he was defeated by her. Meanwhile, his siblings hurriedly retrieved the ring, unaware that their father had arrived and witnessed their celebration, oblivious to the tragic loss of their youngest sibling, he said, his voice strained as he coughed up blood. He swiftly called upon the ring, slipping it onto his finger, and unleashed his wrath upon the witch displaying an immense amount of power and magical energy. The witch, overwhelmed by his anger, was compelled to retreat in fear, he recounted, leaving me astonished by the formidable might of the original Mandarin. I realized that I would need to dedicate even more time to honing my skills with the rings, especially if I wanted to merge them into one. The fact that he was able to make her retreat left me in shock, either she wasn't ready for such a powerful attack, or he simply outmatched her. He disciplined his children as the dragon's bloodline remained inactive for at least three generations. Since Makluan DNA is more prevalent than that of humans, 
he entrusted me with the task of protecting his kingdom once again, after completing its construction. I consented to his decision of not extending his lifespan through the Life Ring's power and Makluan's longevity. After his demise, I carefully placed the rings in their designated temples and remained there until you acquired the Nine Rings. Regrettably, he confessed that he had delayed too much, and now the ring's power was rapidly fading away. I glanced at his left hand, witnessing it gradually transforming into dust. I had a question that piqued my interest. Why are you sharing all of this with me? I inquired, intrigued by this. I can sense your desire for the ring's power to aid you in overcoming a challenge, though I am unaware of its nature. However, it is crucial to ensure that your quest for power does not alter your true self, he concluded, disintegrating into dust along with the stone he held, while I managed to catch the falling ring just in time. Perhaps I should consider taking a break, I mused, reflecting on his comments regarding my ambition for success. One week later. Listen, I'm simply suggesting that it may be beneficial for you to consider redirecting your efforts. Jean expressed a sense of relief when I informed her of my decision to cease my previous efforts to become stronger. We were dining at our apartment, which I now owned after purchasing the hotel. I have retained the existing employees, ensuring that they receive a 20% increase in their compensation package, which now includes comprehensive health benefits. Additionally, for those who demonstrate exceptional dedication and effort, there is the opportunity to retire in their 50s and enjoy a secure and comfortable lifestyle. Financial considerations were not a concern at this stage, and it held little significance to me. Although it was quite a challenge to locate mineral deposits and establish mines independently, the outcome was ultimately successful. Yes, I am aware that there are many formidable opponents who can defeat me with a single strike. I will continue to grow stronger than them eventually, I told Jean. Based on the information you provided, it seems that either these celestials were eliminated by Null or they are currently in seclusion, with no other extraterrestrial beings showing significant concern for Earth at this time, she remarked, and her observation was indeed valid. Earth was considered a relatively insignificant planet before Loki's arrival. Given the significant influence and power that Earth is projected to have in the future, it is not surprising that many would be motivated to seek control over it. Yeah, either way, and let's not forget that the Skyfathers seem to have a vendetta against me. I'm confident that I'll have to deal with them at some point, I mentioned to Jean. We kept eating until Jean asked for dessert. I glanced over the menu in the hotel and saw the chocolate cake. I ordered one entire cake for me and one piece for her. I could eat anything I wanted without becoming obese. Unfortunately for Jean, she continued to gain weight. She made me sleep on the sofa. Now I understand how it feels. I don't need to sleep anymore, yet I still like it. I had an idea about something she may love. I mean, I've never truly been on one. Hey, Jean, would you like to go on a date this Saturday? I asked her, and she froze. Yes, she said before springing at me and kissing me. Honestly, I was looking forward to going on a date with her. Time skip Wednesday at school I was in class with Jean, Felicia, and Peter when someone approached us. Mr. Kent, I would like to speak with you after school, Natasha began, preparing to make her move to entice me after studying her surface thoughts. Yes, Ms. Rushman, I said in a normal tone, although I was really attempting to calm Jean down. Jean's pov, this bitch, I was screaming in my head. Jean you have to calm down, Naruto yelled at me in an attempt to calm me down. I was able to keep myself cool enough to display an interested face. I felt Naruto leaving my thoughts, oh, I am so going to have this spy bitch beneath me. Maybe Naruto wouldn't mind two redheads with him. I could feel myself becoming hot just thinking about Naruto hammering me into our bed as the spy licked the spot where we were united. Natasha was bending down to collect something that had fallen on the floor, with her ass pointed at Naruto. It was a nice ass. I shook my head softly, realizing that he would certainly outlive me. Okay, this one is in, but I am the main one, I thought to myself. I was unhappy at having to accept this, but I'm going to need assistance keeping Naruto happy. Time skip after school Naruto Pav I was feeling more uneasy than ever as I made my way to Natasha's classroom. After that, Jean advised me it was okay to pursue Natasha as she gripped my crotch and promised to have my first everything. Small memory in a toilet around lunchtime, tiny lemon, if you're not interested, skip it. Jean instructed me to follow her, which I did despite my reluctance to accompany her into a lavatory after she forced everyone to leave and opened a gateway to our apartment. Let's go, she murmured in an impersonal voice, but I caught a note of enthusiasm in it. 
she had me sit on the bed and got on her knees, tugging my trousers down. Is this really happening? I was a little surprised at what she was doing. My dick came out, and I saw her eyes were filled with excitement as she wrapped her lips around the head. I gasped at the sensation of her hot lips as her tongue caressed my head, and her eyes glowed with want. Jean, that feels amazing, I whispered to her, and she grinned at me as she proceeded to take it in further. The deeper my dick went into her mouth, the better it felt. She seemed to be loving taking me into her mouth as she groaned, sending vibrations through my dick. Jean, I am going to come, I groaned as she started to suck even harder, causing me to let free in her mouth. She groaned as she tasted and swallowed it, after she finished, she approached me. You can have those sluts but I will be your main girl, she whispered to me. Flashback lemon over I was astonished and really excited, but I knew we weren't old enough yet, however, she did warn me to anticipate it. When I opened the door, I saw her leaning down to pick up some papers that she had purposefully let fall to the ground. I could feel myself growing hard gazing at her ass. Maybe some things don't change I guess, I thought to myself as I observed some of the buttons on her shirt were undone, revealing part of her cleavage, and her shirt clung to her body as I realized the A.C. was running a little hotter. So, Mr. Kent, are you ready for our talk, she added in a seductive way. I am so bored right now, I thought, I'm now gazing at Natasha. Holy shit, she's hot, I thought to myself, she started heading towards me, and I saw she was reflecting about her time in the red room. Mr. Kent, if that is really your name, she said seductively as she looked me up and down, licking her lips. Ms. Rushman, are you okay? I inquired, which appeared to jolt her out of it as she looked me in the eyes. Everything is fine, she muttered, approaching me. She is being too forward, I am going to check what she has planned, I thought, recognizing that she probably believed I was still a lusty adolescent. I am, but still. She came to a halt a little distance away, her eyes glazed over as she passed me and sat down in her chair, falling asleep. You didn't believe I'd let this happen, did you? said Jean telepathically. Did you just cock block me? I responded, a little dismayed. Take a time jump to the Lux Hotel. I'm at my hotel, which I've nicknamed the Lux in honor of Lucifer Morningstar from the DC television series. I was dismayed to find that the one below all isn't Lord Chaos' opponent. He is just a cosmic abstract of gamma radiation, and he is essentially a cloud formed by Hulk's radiation emitted from his body. I also discovered that he is just a component of Mephisto who went rogue and gained enough strength by collecting energy from many hulks around the Marvel Universe to permanently detach himself from him. He pushed Mephisto out of the region of hell he had taken over, but only just. While he is very strong, he does not compete with Lord Chaos at all. My idea is that it possessed the Hulk. Three major clues that it is not Lord Chaos's rival are that he is mindless, which means it is not omniscient that he cannot escape his own realm on his own and must rely on making hulks his avatars, which means he is not omnipresent, and that he can create things out of nothing, destroy everything himself, or create something that can destroy the multiverse, indicating that it is not omnipotent. Another thing that made me realize that it is not the Lord Chaos's evil side was that when I had a thought of the great evil beast, a message came out of nowhere that simply stated. We merged, and you are correct. Although, the one below all merely become an embodiment of what you term the Dark Multiverse solely in Marvel, signed by Lord Chaos, Presence, G.E.B., Great Evil Beast. I was relieved that the Great Evil Beast would not be chasing me. When I read about the Black Multiverse, I felt a shudder down my spine, or find out that it is dying and is just utilizing the Hulk's energy to survive. N. A. In all honesty, I made the one below all about a third of the power of the living tribunal since that narrative irritated me because Hulk's strength doesn't require an entity fueling him up. Think of Hulk being as strong as before the immortal storyline. Jean was working on her schoolwork as I watched Dragon Booster on the sofa and reviewed the abilities of the rings. One that irritated me was the orange Macluan ring, which is meant to change matter to anything I desire. Except I got screwed since it can't manufacture adamantine. True adamantium and vibranium are, however, fair game, which greatly accelerated the production of my ship. Unfortunately, the metals do not arrive tempered with the modification procedure, therefore I must have them tempered. The other rings, on the other hand, greatly benefit me since I have complete access to pyrokinesis from the red ring, hydrokinesis from the blue ring, and cryokinesis from the yellow ring, all of which are amplified by zenith, n, a the adamantine weapon. 
my mental abilities have been substantially boosted to the point that I was able to remove molecules from a rock but was unable to reassemble it, and it was more difficult to test it on ants rather than people. I can now make an energy barrier augmented with my telekinesis that can withstand the greatest offensive spell the ancient one knows, and she permitted me to test it, and she was able to fracture every inch of the shield and break it with a little touch of her fingertips. If the clairvoyance was genuine, it would be valuable. It contains an archive of Makluan knowledge and history before the rings were brought to earth. It also serves as a tracker for people the user has met in his life, which is how Jean discovered the armory in the episode. The white ring granted me authority over the air, implying that I now had entire weather abilities, including aerokinesis. The speed is a little tougher since it just increases the user's speed to Mach 2 while also allowing them to breathe in a vacuum with all 10 rings. I'm not complaining, however, everything is welcome. The one that validated a notion of mine is that the purple ring just grants me the capacity to teleport, and with all 10 rings, I can teleport from Earth to Neptune in around 3 seconds, since that is their maximum time. The modest energy manipulation and increased power result from having just one ring from the armor. It also increases human natural regeneration by around 12%, which seemed little until I discovered that it could slow down aging to the point that you may live for an additional 15 to 19 years. Jean volunteered to test it, which made me glad, even though I had to test it on other elderly folks and discovered that you only need to wear one ring to get this advantage. I was puzzled why this wasn't improved by adding additional rings. Turns out it was more or less for safety reasons because increasing it further could cause severe damage to a human, and even though I am a Kryptonian, I am not going to risk being deformed until I figure out how to replicate the rings in order to create a single ring with all of their powers, at which point I will focus on improving everything else. I thought they would be quite challenging. If they are the same as in the stories, I have no complaints, she said with a hint of disgust, reflecting on their past actions and their current behavior. There are numerous individuals in the world who claim to be offspring of Zeus, and it is evident that their parentage is questionable. He has successfully acquired the knowledge to prevent his children from inheriting any abilities. This Zeus bears a resemblance to the one in my original world. I gained the power of Umbrakinesis and the ability to travel through different dimensions, both neutral and my own, thanks to the Black Makluan Ring. Some individuals were determined to shut it down, and I received a warning from a highly respected figure that it caused damage to the sanctums. So I decided to take it more seriously. I had some reservations about using the Pink Ring, but I proceeded with caution. Since I crafted a deer, and it possessed a soul, I will avoid any further complications with the abstract that I cannot handle. I discovered that I am the rightful owner of the soul of that animal. I had to create a separate realm within my own dimension to accommodate it. It was quite challenging. I had the opportunity to study a real deer and consider how the cells would respond to their surroundings. I performed countless calculations in my mind, which contributed to the creation of the speed force. I will not be assuming a position of authority. The original Mandarin simply altered the guardians of the temples, who were already living beings. I was still exploring the powers that they gave me, though, in order to uncover more about them. If I can find a way to recreate the armor's remarkable healing enhancement, I could potentially extend the lifespan of Jean and others I encounter. Naruto, could you assist me with some science problems? From where she was sitting, Jean asked me. Sure, I replied, reflecting on how much I am enjoying my new life thus far, despite feeling slightly frustrated by her interference. I am eagerly looking forward to our date, fast forward to the present. I am currently going through my wardrobe, carefully selecting an outfit for the occasion. I pondered, considering what Naruto's first girlfriend might enjoy on their upcoming date. She has concerns about my spending habits, even though it's not a problem, I already have a clear plan in mind for where I will be taking her. We will be watching a movie at the theater and then visiting a place of her choice. When I am confident in my outfit choice, I proceed to take a shower, although I don't necessarily require it, I enjoy taking showers. I am contemplating the revelations I have made regarding the scrolls and their intentions for Earth. I wasn't letting those inferior items go away, they have started their invasion with aggression. The other refugees arrive on Earth after establishing contact with a highly influential individual within the world government. Disturbingly, they have been responsible for the disappearance of certain humans, effectively eliminating them from existence and sending their remains on a trajectory towards the sun. It seems that they are being quite secretive about it likely due to a specific law established by a treaty among influential space empires. 
This law mandates that a species must have a minimum of five years of documented history on the planet they inhabit. However, the information provided is not specific enough. It is unclear whether it refers to a minimum requirement of 100 gigabytes of data or if any type of historical data is acceptable. Their history with shield or sword is sufficient to complete the first part, and to be honest, I should have anticipated this. The second part of the treaty states that the planet will be claimed by the most intelligent and powerful species on Earth. Another consideration is that if an empire has already claimed it, they cannot make a claim. At their physical peak, the scrolls possess strength and speed that surpasses that of humans by a significant margin. The intelligence of scrolls surpasses that of the average human by 12%. However, it is important to note that outliers such as Tony Stark, Peter Parker, Reed Richards, and even Dr. Doom do not significantly impact this generalization. It seems that humanity's claim to our own planet has been forfeited in the eyes of the universe. The only reason we are still here is because Earth is under the protection of Asgard. They possess knowledge of the cycles they experience due to the existence of the gods beyond gods that bring about Ragnarok. They have been eagerly anticipating its occurrence as it puts the security they offer in a state of uncertainty. The scrolls require the information to substantiate their documentation of various organisms and their integration into their ecosystems. They are intending to utilize the extensive knowledge that humanity has documented about our planet, disregarding the rich history of our own species, in order to assert their ownership over it. It really frustrated me, there are also other tasks they need to complete in order to lay claim to the planet. However, in all honesty, those other items on the list seem relatively insignificant when compared to the top three. Given the lack of any established authority in this solar system, it's not surprising that the people of Earth are constantly plagued by alien attacks, causing significant hardship. The Earth has gained significant recognition, and the concern lies in the fact that Asgard is the sole protector of our planet. Now, moving on to my next concern. I am determined to eliminate the Olympians, without a doubt. The scrolls were able to establish contact with a select few and started to revere them, granting them newfound authority. These Olympians rely on their unwavering dedication to maintain their strength and harness it to reach new heights. I asserted my ownership over Zenith's previous claim, acquiring a domain that complements my water-based abilities. To truly harness the power of Neptune's domains, I would need to ascend to a godlike status. Nova Roma, despite its reverence for the Olympians, has witnessed a decline in their power. Ancient Greece boasted a population of approximately 13 million individuals who held them in high regard during the peak of their influence. Don't even get me started on ancient Rome. It's a complex topic that I prefer not to delve into. Zeus has effectively exiled the dissenting members of his pantheon who opposed the Skrull's conquest of Earth. Hephaestus was the initial individual to be exiled, with the unexpected addition of Ares, who is currently residing with him somewhere in the United States. Artemis quickly joined them accompanied by Apollo and a number of others who had been expelled by Zeus. I don't know their story, but I hope they are much more pleasant than the characters depicted in the stories. Zeus forcefully stripped them of their power and banished them from Olympus. From my understanding, they are currently seeking assistance from other pantheons while keeping a low profile. The Shinto pantheon, recognizing Hestia's positive reputation, has graciously offered her refuge. Hecate, the goddess of magic, was highly revered by the Egyptians. Zeus's decision to expel numerous individuals reflects his excessive thirst for power, which was fueled by the significant increase in worshippers he gained from an additional 5,300 scrolls, surpassing the population of Nova Roma by 3,800. Those who opted to allow the scrolls to seize control of the earth are now regaining their power. I am considering the possibility of including them in my pantheon once I achieve godhood. Even though I would never allow Athena or Aphrodite to enter my domain once I start eliminating the Greek pantheon. Based on my research into them in Kamar Taj, it appears that Athena played a significant role in initiating World War I, suggesting that this particular version of her has a propensity for conflict. Some of the sexual diseases created here cannot be cured yet. She created the first one out of resentment because a man chose his wife over the goddess of love. I will be cautious about selecting individuals to join my future pantheon. I shake my head and after I finish rinsing myself, I turn the shower off and change into the clothes I selected for my date with Jean. I patiently wait for Jean to finish changing and notice that there is still an hour before our scheduled meeting. I suppose I prepared too soon, I muttered, secretly hoping that we could potentially leave ahead of schedule to purchase some refreshments and take a leisurely stroll. 
I am patiently awaiting Jean's completion of their preparations. I made an effort to avoid looking into her space in the apartment. I considered the theater and the various movie options available. Jean expressed interest in seeing a film titled, Dear John. In order to avoid any negative emotions, I decided to reach a compromise. We agreed to watch the movie of her choice this time, and the next time, I will have the opportunity to select the film. Fortunately, she agreed to this arrangement. I made my way to my computer, attentively listening to Jean's footsteps as we planned to go to the movies. I wanted to inquire about the status of a few projects I have commissioned the fortress to undertake. The ship will be completed within two months if I continue to incorporate additional features, but it may take at least three months. I also created a phantom drive, which was quite challenging. The phantom zone took away certain aspects of me, such as the crimson and speed force energies. Fortunately, as the owner of that dimension, I had a good understanding of its properties and was able to explore it extensively. I discovered that it contained many more elements than platinum kryptonite. Interestingly, it also houses the prison planet from the Smallville TV show. I was able to identify some familiar markings and piece together the puzzle, revealing a structure of immense proportions. One of the other projects I've been working on involves creating proto-adamantium. With the help of the Macluan rings in my space mines, I have the opportunity to conduct extensive testing on it. I've encountered numerous setbacks and I'm still searching for a solution. The 1.0 version of my new armor is highly advanced and boasts impressive power, surpassing even the Mandarin armor it was designed to replace. I added enchantments to significantly enhance its resistance against both physical and magical attacks. I included numerous weapons and incorporated the nanites into hidden compartments, allowing them to transform into different weapons or repair the armor when necessary. As a professional, I preferred to keep Zenith as a confidential asset, known only to myself. I crafted some pieces out of true adamantium and others out of vibranium. I noticed Jean approaching her door, so I quickly shut down my computer and walked over. As she opened the door, I was utterly speechless. She is dressed in a blue shirt and sweater, which is a common choice for a casual outing. What caught my eye was the way it complemented her figure, accentuating her curves. The shirt hugged her just enough to reveal the outline of her bra, but she quickly covered up and blushed when she noticed my gaze, playfully winking at me. It's quite warm, isn't it?" she said with a seductive tone. I responded with a smile, captivated by her beauty. She had applied some light makeup that accentuated her stunning green eyes, and her choice of red lipstick added to her allure. She gracefully looped her arm through mine, and together we made our way to the theater, which was conveniently located nearby. Time skip I am pleased as we departed from the restaurant we were dining at. I didn't enjoy the movie, but I didn't want to express my opinion to Jean. She desired to visit a diner that held sentimental value from her past experiences with her parents. Shortly after, we were on our way out when we suddenly detected an immense force rapidly approaching us in a vehicle, despite it being nowhere near mine. Jean lacks proper fighting skills. Teaching over five different fighting styles is not the reason for this. There is an unsettling energy that I cannot quite put into words. I ensured that our presence was disregarded and directed Jean to proceed towards the fortress. Using the portal, I commanded it to activate the internal defenses. A woman of exceptional beauty emerges from the car, captivating with her blonde hair, light blue eyes, and a figure that exudes confidence. However, something prevented me from appreciating her, as something about her presence repulsed me and made me feel extremely nauseous. Hello, I am Aphrodite, the goddess of love, she said in a seductive manner. I suppressed my disgust, hello, I said in a polished tone. Let's handle this in a civilized manner, unless you prefer innocent bystanders to be caught in the middle," she said sarcastically, casting a disdainful glance at the individuals nearby. They were disregarding her, but I could perceive the animosity she held towards humans in general. May I ask what you're looking for? I asked, mentally preparing myself for a challenge. You, she said in a straightforward manner, as I felt the urge to strike the cheerful expression that she believed to be attractive. I detected a certain energy emanating from her specifically in the realm of love. It appeared to be attempting to distance itself from her. I could sense something different about her, something that made me feel uneasy. I knew she was associated with beauty, but this time it felt unpleasant. I'm sorry, but I'm not interested, I said politely as I looked at her. I believe you are left with no alternative, considering your ominous remarks towards Gia and the Skyfather's desire for your demise in order to claim your soul. Olympus, being protective of its own, seems to be involved, she stated, 
briefly displaying a faint green hue on her skin before it reverted back to its usual tan shade. I'm not interested, especially considering Olympus' less than stellar reputation, I said to her, hoping to bring this conversation to a close. Perhaps I will allow some of my staff to engage in a conversation with that red-haired individual who accompanied you, she said arrogantly before I delivered a punch, causing her to be propelled through the air as I pursued her in a fit of anger. That's it, I am going to confront the Olympians or what's left of them anyway, I thought in frustration as I imagined them taking advantage of Jean and subjecting her to the same ordeal Charles experienced at his school. I ensured that she was forcefully removed from the city. She was loudly expressing her frustration throughout the entire ordeal, attempting to overpower me but ultimately falling short. I swiftly subdued her before recalling my duty to Gia. I intervened and stopped her from making contact, then ascended to a higher altitude. I am invincible, even if my head is torn off, I will return, she spoke in a manner that seemed slightly unhinged, her laughter filling the air. I removed Zenith as she abruptly ceased her laughter and gazed at me with a sense of apprehension. No, please, I am begging you. Don't, please, she continued to plead desperately. I could immediately identify the issue with her. I sensed the presence of several mortal souls within her. The Olympians likely utilized them to enhance their strength. With a single swift motion, I severed her body, causing her soul to depart. I'm unsure if those who departed are utilizing souls from the underworld. I will take care of them promptly to set them free. I crouched down, certain that Gia was aware of my actions in ending Aphrodite's life. I couldn't help but wonder about the occasional transformation of her skin into a pale shade of green. Gia, inform the Olympians of my intention to engage in conflict with them, I commanded, as the earth trembled momentarily before settling. This is a serious situation, I said to myself, fully aware of the gravity of the task at hand. Fast forward a few hours, why did you declare war on them? Jean raised their voice in frustration towards me. I responded by mentioning that Aphrodite had made a threat involving her servants if I didn't join them, I replied. Jean let out a deep breath as she took a seat in a chair. We are currently at the fortress, where I returned after informing the Ancient One of my intention to eliminate the remnants of Olympus. Naruto, you shouldn't take on all of them by yourself, she said, expressing her concern for me. That is incorrect, Jean. I can, and I will, I confidently stated. I am here to assist you, and I expect to be treated with respect. We are both targets now, remember? She made that comment as soon as she noticed my mouth starting to speak. All right, I understand your request and I am grateful for your assistance, however, I would like to clarify that I will be utilizing my expertise to create the necessary equipment, I explained, outlining my terms. All right, she said in a straightforward manner as she inspected the room I had prepared for her in case of emergencies. We have been discussing for some time now the events surrounding Aphrodite and my decision to wage war against Olympus. I intended to use them as a model for the other pantheons and, above all, to demonstrate to the fates that I am not to be trifled with. After eliminating Aphrodite, I took meticulous measures to dispose of her remains. I ensured their complete eradication by launching them into the vast expanse of space, meticulously fragmenting them into numerous pieces, and subjecting them to a powerful blast. I had completed the bomb, specifically engineered to target only the pure-blooded scrolls. Its design ensured that it would circumvent any defensive measures, as it would disperse throughout the entire atmosphere. I ensured that I moderated my behavior around any potential offspring they may have on Earth. I ensured the acceleration of the ship's construction by creating additional construction bots, despite the ship not being fully completed. I had planned on using that ship as my primary base throughout the entire universe. I made remarkable progress with the Makluan rings. I had achieved an impressive level of elemental control with them. Although I was far from being a professional, I am determined to enhance my skills in elemental magic. Currently, I need to determine the best approach for accomplishing this task. Approaching them directly might result in some resistance, but my expertise would effectively handle the situation. They may not be as formidable as they used to be, which could give me an edge over them. I would need to find a method to ensure that I am targeted by them in order to allow my adaptation to effectively fulfill its purpose. I began my adaptation from scratch. As time went on, my body underwent significant changes, transforming me from a mere Kryptonian. I could hardly discern the distinctions, and when I clumsily wielded the time stone I created with my limited mastery, it rendered me impervious to temporal assaults, or at the very least, considerably resilient against them. Regrettably, 
I neglected to harness its potential for time manipulation. Through my adaptation, my body has become highly efficient at harnessing and utilizing solar energy. I have developed a high level of resistance to energy attacks. While I have the ability to absorb certain magical energies, some of them can be quite distracting and I need to stay focused on my current task. I plan to explore some extremely radioactive locations in search of new abilities, hopefully, I'll come across a place that grants me the power of teleportation, similar to how Hull does it. It would be great to have a natural affinity for space, as relying solely on my portals and constantly performing complex calculations is becoming quite tedious. I possess a unique ability known as, Superman Vision, or Power Bequeathment, enabling me to bestow my power upon others. My enhanced vision used to exhaust me, but that changed after I absorbed sunlight, significantly boosting my energy reserves. So, perhaps I can utilize it on someone I completely trust, but there is one factor that holds me back. In the Smallville TV show, Jonathan Kent was granted the abilities of a Kryptonian. Unfortunately, his human body was unable to withstand the immense power, ultimately leading to the acceleration of his heart condition and resulting in his untimely demise. I have been diligently working on my armor, making it a top priority, however, I have yet to discover a method for creating proto-adamantium. I am interested in learning how to replicate it by observing and figuring out the structure under supervision. I have the ability to replicate true adamantium, and I am curious if it is compatible with proto-adamantium. Steve Rogers has not yet been located by S.H.I.E.L.D., as he remains frozen in ice. Zenith has demonstrated the ability to defeat gods, as evidenced by her victory over Aphrodite. However, it is important to note that Aphrodite was in a weakened state due to the lack of human worship for an extended period of time. Unfortunately, a significant portion of her power had diminished as the goddess of love. She used to be revered as the deity of love, but her actions took a dark turn when she started to manipulate mortals, fueling their desires and causing discord among couples. As her affection for humans waned and turned into hatred, her once cherished domain of love slipped away from her completely. She achieved a prominent status in the realm of sensuality and aesthetics, as some individuals engage in certain professions driven by financial necessity. I have made significant progress in my research on the runes engraved into Excalibur. However, in order to complete the enchantments, I still need to locate a deceased celestial and extract the flames from it. Fortunately, I have identified a potential source, but there are a few other tasks I must complete before embarking on that journey. I have concerns about the possibility of adding proto-adamantium or uru to zenith after enchanting it. The armor is almost finished, with ample protection and enhancements that will greatly assist me. Despite its high energy consumption, a single arc reactor is sufficient to power it. Additionally, I have incorporated a few smaller ones in the palms of my hands and one discreetly placed in the middle of my back as a precaution against surprise attacks. I considered adding some enhancements to my boots, ultimately deciding that it would be beneficial in case of emergencies and to give my kicks an added boost. I considered the humanoid jackal created by the original Mandarin, it possesses a certain level of intelligence, although it may not be particularly advanced. It would be beneficial to have a professional who can ensure that no one can manipulate the speed force and travel through time. There are typically unfavorable outcomes when individuals tamper with time travel. As a highly skilled individual, one must always be cautious when dealing with the concept of time. In my case, I possess an extraordinary power known as the speed force, which grants me incredible abilities. However, it may be necessary for me to consider acquiring additional defenses to counter any potential threats. Two days later, the story continues. I believe I am prepared for the battle, I whispered to myself. The question is whether I possess enough strength, I murmured to myself. Other pantheons may engage in conflict as they vie for control over the territory that the Olympians governed, which possessed a significant advantage over them, it was situated on Earth. They were situated in a pocket dimension closely connected to the Earth, surpassing even the Asgardians' world tree. Since they were still on Earth, it was just a pocket dimension within it. When I eliminated Aphrodite, I greatly benefited the world, leading people to awaken and discover genuine love, the kind that lasts, rather than hasty marriages followed by quick divorces. It's worth noting that a significant decrease of 6% has been observed in global divorce rates, and it appears that this downward trend is continuing. I cannot predict the outcome of eliminating additional deities. Several Olympians possess domains that are more abstract in nature. I understand that their power is incomparable to that of the abstracts. If I want to ensure that the world remains balanced and avoid any potential negative consequences, 
this situation is likely to cause me some trouble. I rose from my seat, diligently monitoring my project's progress and the financial gains generated by my newly established hotel. Everything was going remarkably well, although I made sure to avoid any large, profit-driven corporations for the time being. I was primarily focusing on smaller areas such as food and sports, I am planning to enter the field of medicine, but it will require time and financial investment before I can see any returns. I diligently searched for additional mineral-rich areas and carefully devised strategies to acquire them, ensuring the utmost confidentiality of my space mining operations for as long as possible. I visited my personal lab where I was conducting experiments with the X-Gene. This is quite questionable in my opinion, although it does provide some insights. In summary, the X-Gene allows the host to establish a connection with a dimension or entity, as seen in Gene's situation, granting them a significant level of power that can vary in different instances. However, many individuals may find it necessary to enhance their physical capabilities in order to unlock their latent potential. One fundamental method to achieve this is through regular exercise, which can bolster your resilience and enable you to handle greater levels of power. However, there are exceptions to this rule, with Logan being the most notable one. His healing abilities improve and strengthen gradually, albeit with a limit. Actually, I might even consider him to be on par with Captain America in terms of physical prowess, given that his body is also in excellent shape. I haven't been able to determine the source of his healing abilities or the origin of his claws, which has been quite perplexing. I possess the X-Gene of Aurora, Emma, and Eric. I'm uncertain about how my body would respond to the introduction of the X-Gene and whether it would acquire similar abilities. To be completely frank, I can easily overlook Emma's X-Gene as I have no use for the diamond form whatsoever. I wanted to inquire about obtaining Wanda Maximoff's X-Gene, but I ultimately chose not to pursue it. I wish to avoid any potential conflicts with Kathan or the High Evolutionary. After some time, I recalled my intention to elevate the Jackal to the level of the Black Flash or Black Racer, but it would require me to establish a connection between him and the concept of death. So I am essentially hiring him to track down individuals who tamper with time travel. Dr. Doom has started to explore the realm of magic that I granted him access to, and he appears to be flourishing. Spells that used to exhaust him now come effortlessly. I occasionally keep tabs on him to see if he has any undisclosed plans, as he seems to be more focused on his leadership responsibilities. I am having a suit made to assist Jean and provide the option of teleporting her back to the fortress if needed. Jean provided valuable input in the design process, and I must admit, I felt a strong attraction when I pictured her wearing it. I ensured that a more secure form was added to it during our encounter with the Olympians. I had already made arrangements to handle them, as I was fortunate enough to have access to some records that detailed their true abilities. Fortunately, there have been only a few, but they have been sufficient to assist me in initiating my preparations. I let out a deep sigh, I am planning to confront Olympus soon. While locating their whereabouts was straightforward, I anticipate that the battle itself will pose a greater challenge, I muttered to myself, resolute in my determination to emerge victorious in this conflict. One week has passed. Naruto's point of view I am observing the mountain that is linked to Olympus. Mount Olympus is widely regarded as the residence of a highly esteemed pantheon on Earth. The entrance is located at the tip for some unknown reason. Jean stayed in the fortress after I convinced her to remain there. Although she was initially upset, she understood the importance of me clearing some of them out before she could assist me. I am feeling anxious, as I had contemplated taking decisive action against those who have wronged me. It seems necessary in order to prevent further interference or, at the very least, minimize it to a more manageable extent. I am being overly optimistic about this, I admitted to myself, acknowledging that my expectations are primarily based on hope rather than certainty. One advantage I can foresee is the rewards I will gain from them. I am seeking to acquire additional adamantine and any relevant information that may be available in Olympus. I prepared to forcefully open the portal, as any skilled magic user can do so. However, this is only to maintain the connection with Earth. Placing certain types of wards could potentially disrupt this connection and trap them inside until it stabilizes naturally. It's evident that they didn't leave it defenseless, as I noticed some wards in place. They wouldn't be stuck there because the gods from that realm have a connection to Earth through Gia. She has the ability to create a portal for them, but crossing over would leave them even more vulnerable than before. If I can gain access to their equipment, I might have a chance to take control of their domains. One drawback of having Zenith is that I already have domains even though I am not a deity, yet. 
I acquired the domains associated with Neptune, and fortunately, I did not acquire the domains of Aphrodite after defeating her. In order to fully harness the immense power of Zeus' divine weapon fused with Zenith, one must ascend to the status of a god. The problem with this is that the Olympians rely on faith, which can be a fragile source of power when it comes to gods. I am aware that Sidorak was once a god until he was compelled to transform into a demonic deity and assume control over the Crimson Dimension. I prefer to maintain my originality and not be influenced by others. I was interrupted from my thoughts when I noticed someone emerging from the portal, they had an awe-inspiring presence. We are aware that you are being observed, he stated. I am Dinias, the god of hatred. You will face me if you want to enter Olympus, he said. Even now, I could sense a significant amount of power emanating from him, which is to be expected given his domain of hatred. I approached him while calling upon Zenith and donning my armor. I have high expectations for the new armor's ability to withstand attacks, and in case it falls short, I can always rely on the modified Mandarin armor as a backup in emergency situations. I approached him swiftly, exercising caution in case any external forces were observing my actions for their own benefit. He brandished a crimson, leaf-shaped sword, lunging towards me with a fierce strike. Swiftly evading his attack, I deftly countered with a light kick, sending him stumbling several meters away. A pained grunt escaped his lips as he struggled to regain his composure, his feet firmly planted in the shifting ground beneath him. I am hesitant because I believe it is crucial to gain more experience in combat. While I may possess superior strength and speed, I understand that facing an opponent who is equally strong and fast but more skilled would put me at a disadvantage. I am reluctant to solely rely on my ability to adapt, especially when confronting formidable adversaries like gods, as it would take considerable time to adjust to their unique abilities, such as poison or other unknown threats. I will utilize it later though. I will defeat you and demonstrate my skills to become an Olympian, he shouted foolishly while attacking me recklessly. This became increasingly somber as I skillfully evaded each of his attacks, ultimately delivering a decisive blow that resulted in his demise. As his lifeless body faded away, a sense of finality settled in. I went through some of his memories as he passed away and saw one that made me want to facepalm. They failed to implement any safeguards against non-human entities, assuming that they would never face a direct attack. I was amazed by their complete lack of professionalism and intelligence, which is likely a combination of both at this stage. I started to feel a significant depletion of divine essence from this utterly inadequate deity. What have they done? I exclaimed in slight horror as my suspicions were confirmed. They are harnessing the energy of human souls. Picture the merging of souls, as if they were united within a candle, and each time the candle was ignited, their essence would flicker briefly until the candle burned out. They are causing immense harm, stripping away everything that once made them human, leaving behind only a hollow shell devoid of memories or emotions, transforming them into pure beings akin to newborns. Empty souls lack the power and purity of those who possess a genuine and conscientious nature. The quality of one's actions improves over time, making pure-hearted individuals more desirable targets for corrupting influences. Empty souls may have quantity, but they lack the essential quality. I am deeply frustrated by their actions towards the souls, and if Hades is involved, I am determined to address the situation, I expressed with intense emotion. I am observing the entrance into Olympus, sensing their anticipation on the other side. As I approach it, I notice something emerging from it and swiftly evade the energy blast that was unleashed. Let's go, I thought to myself as I swiftly maneuvered to avoid a greatsword swung by an opponent. I swiftly strike with Zenith, effortlessly piercing the armor of my assailant, causing him to cry out in agony. I noticed more individuals approaching as I swiftly eliminated my previous assailant with a precise strike to the chest. As I approach the others, I observe that they possess a similar aura to Dinia's and are harnessing the energy of human souls to fuel their abilities. I felt a sense of unease as they approached me with anger, their fiery energy reflecting their insatiable desire. I wasn't concerned about what they wanted to take from me. I approached them with a professional demeanor, ensuring that I remained vigilant to prevent any potential attacks. A group of individuals confronted me simultaneously. I crafted several water spears and skillfully launched them, effortlessly piercing through their target's heads. I observed my surroundings in Olympus and noticed the abundant use of marble in its construction. However, the majority of the pillars and temples appeared to be in a state of disrepair. It was evident that some sort of destructive force had swept through the area, leaving behind a trail of ruined temples. 
A battle, I thought to myself, aware that they may be regrouping and seizing this chance to eliminate the majority of them so Jean can come to my aid. I skillfully intercepted a spear hurled in my direction, swiftly impaling another foe with it. With precision, I delivered a powerful punch to the base of the spear, propelling it through multiple adversaries. Employing my exceptional heat vision, I effortlessly dispatched several more opponents. I eliminated some of them with Zenith to ensure they could not return. I promptly proceeded to eliminate them all without hesitation. I could sense the departure of the souls as I skillfully eliminated a few of them. I swiftly defeated another opponent by delivering a powerful blow and swiftly removing his head. I created a formidable shield around myself, deflecting the powerful magical blasts. The force of the attacks caused the surrounding area to shatter, revealing the source of the blasts emanating from the damaged temples. I observe the scene and notice that they are preparing to cast spells. It's evident that their spells possess considerable power, as they prepared to unleash their spells, I made the calculated decision to unleash a powerful attack, reserving some energy in case a formidable opponent were to emerge. I swiftly moved past them and noticed their stunned expressions, as if time had stood still. Without hesitation, I swiftly removed their heads and delivered a precise stab to one of their chests. Raising my arm, I sliced through their chest and seamlessly severed their head in half. I quickly made my way over to the others, swiftly striking and finishing off my opponents with precision. Eventually, my relentless pursuit of knowledge prevailed as I seized one of them and soared above the ground, delving into his thoughts to uncover the truth. After I completed my task, I found myself perplexed by their lack of knowledge regarding the origin of the souls. It seems that Hades has been absent from Olympus for quite some time now. I pondered if he had joined another pantheon to distance himself from Zeus. I swiftly incapacitated the individual I was restraining, delivering a forceful blow to his head. Their ambition reaches its peak as they are driven by the promise of obtaining my weapon and sharing the company of the red-headed girl, as revealed by Zeus. He was referring to Jean I was extremely frustrated, my girl was left untouched. I decided to reach out to Jean for assistance in dealing with these individuals. I sent a message through a highly specialized channel, allowing her to harness its power without relying on the speed force or crimson energy. I sensed her reception of it, and as she arrived, I proceeded to another location with the intention of eliminating as many individuals as possible, and I succeeded. I start by executing a precise maneuver, swiftly disarming an opponent and launching their weapon towards a vulnerable area. The projectile passes through its intended target, continuing its trajectory to incapacitate two additional individuals before coming to rest in the ground. I performed a highly aggressive act, severing an individual's arm and subsequently dividing their body in two. I became frustrated with the situation and ultimately decided to take drastic action. I soared to great heights when I observed a bolt of lightning attempting to strike me. I descended swiftly, enveloped in a powerful aura of fire magic. Upon impact, a devastating explosion eradicated a number of remaining adversaries, coinciding with my detection of Jean's imminent arrival through the dimensional portal. Jean, come over to me, it will be easier if we work together. I provided her with false information in order to ascertain her location. On my way, she declared, resolute in her determination to assist, as I could sense her tearing some of them apart. I swiftly pivoted in a circle, eliminating the adversaries that were starting to encircle me. I noticed Jean walking towards me in her sleek new suit, crafted with cutting-edge materials, and enhanced with her extraordinary abilities. She effortlessly utilized her telekinesis to enhance her speed while wearing it. The outfit she wore bore a striking resemblance to the one depicted in the comics, featuring a combination of green and gold. However, instead of the customary thigh-high boots, she opted for a pair of regular golden boots. She appeared attractive, and she seemed to notice my gaze and playful gesture. Do you like the appearance? She asked telepathically. I replied with the correct information. Efficiently, we swiftly dealt with them and observed numerous souls departing to their respective afterlife. It was evident that among those I eliminated were deities, including a handful of goddesses whom I recognize. However, I disregarded their presence, considering their weakened state. We should visit the largest temple. I am confident that we will locate the remaining forces in theirs. I communicated with her using telepathy. She calmly acknowledged our departure as we soared through the air, accompanied by the distant sounds of conflict. Eventually, we reached a colossal door, towering at an impressive height of 15 meters. I swiftly opened them, and I was taken aback by what I witnessed. Is it necessary to take action? 
Jean inquired with me using telepathy. I'm unsure, I responded as we observed the scene of Zeus being defeated by a figure clad in black armor, wielding a two-pronged spear, likely Hades. The helmet emitted a strong aura, while a lightning-formed spear lay on the ground. Amidst the intense battle, I glimpsed a glimmering golden medal near Zeus. Hades ceased his assault upon noticing our presence. Who are you wait? I understand that you are the individual who is referred to as the Fateless One, he raised his voice and eventually lowered it. But it appears that you have achieved the status of a realm lord, he diligently prepared himself for a battle. I may have to eliminate you individually, but I won't go down without a fight, he declared, gesturing towards us with his weapon. Jean was preparing for a battle. Jean, please remain calm, I informed her that we might not have to engage in a confrontation with him. Our issue revolves around Zeus and his allies, I informed him, attempting to soothe his emotions, and he complied. He affects everyone, doesn't he? He spoke with a more composed tone yet remained wary of our presence. Just as he was about to turn around, a sudden lightning bolt struck Hades from behind. Hades was propelled towards a pillar, which then collapsed onto him. Zeus appeared angry as he stood up, I cannot believe the audacity of everyone attacking me in my own throne room. I am the ruler of the cosmos, he proclaimed with an air of superiority and a hint of immaturity. We should take care of him, Jean said with a serious expression, observing Zeus's ongoing tantrum. Yes, let's eliminate him, he stated, maintaining a serious expression. Hum, it appears that eliminating deities is a rather effortless task, I pondered silently, only to recollect the extent of my immense capabilities. You are disregarding the authority of the king of the gods, he exclaimed loudly as I observed a woman, possibly a goddess, approaching him from behind. Zeus swiftly turned around and delivered a powerful backhand so fast that it appeared as a blur to me. The impact created a significant shockwave. I vaguely recognized the woman, who bore a striking resemblance to Hera from the Blood of Zeus Netflix show that I never got around to finishing. Despite her disheveled appearance, with broken shackles on her arms and legs, numerous bruises and slashes on her body, and a badly bruised right side of her face, I noticed that she was also bleeding. The ones I eliminated didn't bleed golden, but rather regular blood, what actions did he take? Zeus swiftly pivoted as lightning crackled around him, demonstrating his attempt to emulate the velocity of the speed force. Although it did enhance his speed, it paled in comparison to the extraordinary swiftness I achieved through the speed force. I enveloped Jean in a protective energy bubble while she voiced her concerns. I quickly approached Zeus as he called forth his lightning bolt, transforming Zenith into a formidable longsword. Our clash sent powerful shockwaves rippling through the air. I engaged in a confrontation with Zeus and utilized my heat vision at an intensity capable of melting concrete on his eyes. Surprisingly, instead of yielding, he responded with a scream that only seemed to further provoke him. I observed his surprising resistance to my heat vision as he attempted to strike me. Swiftly, I seized his hand and swiftly delivered a forceful kick to his chest, causing him to be propelled backward. As he landed, I couldn't help but notice the peculiar golden hue of the blood he spat out, which seemed to possess a potent corrosive quality upon contact with the floor. Undoubtedly, there is a formidable power coursing through his veins. I couldn't help but wonder what Dinia's, despite lacking the divine blood, was capable of doing. It was quite a surprise to see Zeus engaging in a battle with me. As he rushed towards me, he suddenly stumbled, seemingly losing his balance out of nowhere, however, just before he fell, I had a feeling that Jean had somehow intervened, causing him to trip. I said to her, that's my girl, I wasn't allowed to leave, but I couldn't help but notice his impressive speed. If it weren't for this protective bubble, I would probably have been killed by the powerful shockwave. She expressed some frustration initially but eventually became more composed. I assure you that I will make it up to you at a later time, I informed her. You better, she said with a hint of sarcasm. Zeus rose to his feet, emitting a series of grunts while his skin started to crack, revealing a vibrant array of colors as his body expanded. It is imperative to neutralize him, as his actions could have catastrophic consequences for all of us. I heard Hera gasp out in a strained voice as I turned to her and witnessed her internal state. She experienced significant vocal cord issues, coughing up a mixture of golden and red blood. She is transitioning to a mortal state. I told her, Jean, please assist her. Why? She inquired, giving me a disapproving glare. She might have insights into Zeus' rise to power and his methods, I replied. Fine, 
she said casually as the bubble moved with her, and I skillfully avoided another punch from Zeus. I made a swift attempt to strike him from the side, but he skillfully defended himself with his bolt. He delivered a powerful left hook that struck my cheek, propelling me backward with tremendous force from the impact. What was that speed and strength? I pondered as I experienced discomfort after a long period of respite. My adaptation resumed its function as the pain subsided, and my strength increased. I returned to the temple as I noticed Zeus launching an assault on the bubble. Jean remained protected within the bubble as Zeus unleashed his assault. Golden blood trickled from Jean's eyes, ears, nose, and mouth. Jean was attempting to harm him mentally. I immediately observed a crimson streak trickling from Jean's nose, accompanied by a pained expression on her face. I swiftly collided with Zeus using crimson energy, but I promptly disabled it as he possessed the ability to inflict harm upon me. I am confident in my ability to adapt to it. He managed to maintain his balance as unexpected vines emerged from the ground and saved him from falling. I focused intently as I flew towards him, observing his actions as he started to form a ball of fire I experienced the ball exploding firsthand. I struck him in the chest while he landed a blow to my face, creating shockwaves. However, I was the one who was causing harm to the other person. Zeus attempted to strike me with his bolt, but I skillfully defended myself using Zenith, to be continued. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to hit that like button and smash that subscribe for more amazing videos, and of course, drop a comment down below to let me know your thoughts.